250 million venomous snakes suddenly go into a frenzy, breaking out of their containers. The contestants who witness the scene run for their lives in terror. Within just a minute, the survivors are devoured by the venomous snakes one after another. Now, only a girl remains in the entire arena, but before she can even catch her breath, the frenzied swarm of snakes continues to advance towards her. As she is being enveloped by the snakes, at this critical moment, the girl begins to sing out loud. Her voice, full of emotion, moves all the spectators watching the game, leaving them deeply touched. Even the snakes are affected by her singing, slowing down their crawling speed. This is the blockbuster thriller action movie of the year, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. The story begins with an unprecedented battle royale game. Nobles, seeking amusement, select 12 young people from the lower classes of different districts to fight in an arena. The last survivor will ascend dramatically, becoming a member of the nobility. As the countdown ends, everyone starts to scramble for the melee weapons dropped on the ground and attack each other. In less than two minutes, some of the contestants who got weapons first have eliminated two unlucky ones. But Lucy, a poor girl from District 12, doesn't want to participate in this battle at all. To survive, Lucy quickly drags her sick companion, Jessup, to the underground tunnels to look for a chance to live. Then, a man and a woman rush towards them. Luckily, as the mantis stalks the cicada, unaware of the oriole behind, the duo was killed by a squad of four who arrive later. Lucy and Jessup managed to escape because of this. However, what Lucy didn't expect was that Jessup had contracted rabies. Soon, Jessup's condition worsens, and in his delirium, he starts to attack Lucy. At this critical moment, Coriolanus, the mentor watching the game from behind the scenes, timely sends a drone to deliver mineral water. Rabies sufferers are afraid of touching water. Pouring it on him would make Jessup foam at the mouth and die. You want to over me, now I'm watching over you. Sleep, sleep. Trouble follows trouble. The squad of four catches up, surrounding Lucy, preparing to besiege her. In a moment of urgency, it's Coriolanus again who timely sends a drone under the guise of delivering water to Lucy, interrupting the squad's attack. Lucy takes this opportunity to hide in a corner. Seeing this, the squad has no choice but to change their target to another girl standing on a high place. The unarmed girl is quickly stabbed through with a fork. Meanwhile, Lucy is not idle. She takes out the poison she had prepared in advance and pours it into the mineral water. Then, while the four are fighting with the girl, she pours out all the mineral water. This way, the squad will definitely drink the poison water when they drink. Afterward, Lucy takes advantage of the chaos to hide in the pipes, observing them through the wire mesh. Just as one of them is about to get the mineral water, another woman stops him, accusing him of not catching Lucy. Before the man can retort, the woman stabs him through with a fork. Now, the squad was down to three members, but the cautious trio did not drink the poison water. Instead, Dill, who had been hiding in the shadows, drank the mineral water due to extreme thirst and soon died from poisoning. Watching Dill's body, his companion Reaper was devastated. He gathered all the deceased bodies together, then tore off a nearby flag to cover them in hopes of granting the dead some peace. At this point, Reaper no longer wanted to fight. He was already sick of this bloody and violent game. Are you going to punish me now? This sentiment seriously angered Dr. Gall, who organized the competition. To accelerate the progress of the game, she used drones to deliver a gift to the survivors. The next second, hundreds of millions of venomous snakes quickly crawled out from their boxes, leaving the contestants powerless to fight back. In the end, only Lucy was left alive by chance. Coriolanus thought his protege, Lucy, could win the competition. Unexpectedly, Volumnia continued to control the swarm of snakes, preparing for a massacre with no survivors. Fortunately, at the last moment, Lucy, with her soul captivating singing, moved the audience present. Ultimately, under public pressure, Volumnia had no choice but to spare Lucy's life. Thus, Coriolanus became the winner of the 10th Hunger Games. He thought this victory would earn him a scholarship. But the next day, instead of seeing the surviving Lucy, Coriolanus was greeted by the stern face of Principal Casca. It turned out Casca found Coriolanus's handkerchief and a bottle of poison on Lucy, indicating Coriolanus had helped her, which violated the rules of the Hunger Games. As a result, Coriolanus would not only be deprived of the scholarship, but he would also be dispatched to a distant place to become an anonymous personal protector due to cheating. Coriolanus was thus shaven bald and forcibly sent to District 12 to serve as a protector. Fortunately, his friend Sejanus accompanied him to District 12. Unlike the bustling capital where Coriolanus is from, here one sees factories and impoverished residents as far as the eye can reach. As a protector, 
Coriolanus had only one task, to watch over every move in District 12 on behalf of the commander. Coriolanus quickly adapted to life as a protector. The commander, adhering to the principle of rather killing 10,000 by mistake than letting one go, wantily killed the innocent in District 12 every day. Coriolanus did not object to this, after all, he knew well that deterrence could also ensure the stability of the area. But that evening, while relaxing in a bar, he encountered Lucy again, who was performing there. Although Lucy and Coriolanus had only spent a few days together during the Hunger Games, Coriolanus had already deeply fallen in love with this extremely intelligent girl. At that moment, when a drunkard attempted to lay hands on Lucy, Coriolanus didn't think twice before rushing forward and beating the drunkard up. Later, while on patrol, Coriolanus encountered Lucy again. He told Lucy that he was originally supposed to be sent to District 8, but he gave all his savings to the dispatcher so that he could come to District 12 to find Lucy. However, Lucy wasn't very happy to see Coriolanus, as she was still feeling guilty deep down for poisoning and killing others. To comfort Lucy, Coriolanus said that everything was his fault. After hesitating for a moment, Coriolanus kissed Lucy, and their souls mingled once again, but due to their different statuses, they could only secretly meet in the forest. After that, Coriolanus and Lucy indeed had a honeymoon period. They swam together in the lake and chatted in the forest. But one day, Lucy suddenly talked about their future. Coriolanus said that after serving for 20 years, he would definitely return to the capital, and by then, Lucy could go back with him. Unexpectedly, Lucy said that the capital wasn't suitable for her, and she still couldn't understand why the Hunger Games were set up. A few days later, the commander suddenly found Coriolanus. Thinking highly of Coriolanus's talent and considering he was the son of a general, the commander recommended him to attend the second term of the military academy for further studies. There, Coriolanus would receive a decent salary and might even go to the Congress. The commander gave Coriolanus 10 days to think about it. Upon hearing this, Coriolanus was overjoyed and immediately called his friend to share the news, saying that after graduating from the military academy, he would have the opportunity to be transferred back to the capital. But the next second, he couldn't be happy anymore. It turned out that Sejanus, sympathizing with those who were wrongly accused, actually wanted to take them and flee District 12 towards the unknown north. Because of this, Coriolanus had a big argument with Sejanus. He couldn't understand why Sejanus would do such a thing, why he would get involved with some rebels. To make a clear distinction from Sejanus, Coriolanus secretly recorded Sejanus's words. But what Coriolanus never expected was that Sejanus would take action that very night, trying to persuade Coriolanus and a group of rebels to leave. The various parties didn't come to an agreement in the secret meeting. In a moment of high emotion, Coriolanus directly shot and killed the mayor's daughter and her boyfriend. The next day, the mayor, furious, immediately ordered a citywide search for the real culprit. Although the mayor did not initially suspect the protectors, Coriolanus believed it was only a matter of time before he was discovered, so he found Lucy and suggested they flee north together at dawn the next day. To lower his own suspicion, Coriolanus handed over the recording to the commander. Thus, Sejanus was arrested on the spot for treason. After witnessing Sejanus being hanged, Coriolanus and Lucy fled north together. However, during their conversation, Coriolanus gradually felt Lucy's distrust towards him. Soon, a downpour began, and they hurriedly took shelter in a cabin. It was then that Coriolanus inadvertently found his murder weapon in the cabin. If he destroyed the evidence, all problems would be solved, and he would no longer need to flee north with Lucy. Their eyes met, and both Coriolanus and Lucy felt the distrust from the other. Sensing something was amiss, Lucy lied about going to the lakeside to dig for herbs and then left through the door. Coriolanus quickly followed her, wanting to have a talk with Lucy outside. But the clever Lucy was prepared for this. She intentionally set a trap with a doll. When Coriolanus got close, he would be unexpectedly bitten by a small snake. This doll was a gift from Coriolanus to Lucy, and now Lucy was giving it back to him, meaning she wanted to part ways with Coriolanus. Coriolanus did not intend to let Lucy go easily. If Lucy were alive, he would always worry about his crime being exposed. The best way to ensure complete security was to silence her by killing her. Coriolanus thus roamed the forest with a gun in hand. Unfortunately, he never found Lucy. He could only hear Lucy's singing echoing through the forest. With no other choice, Coriolanus threw the gun into the lake to destroy it, then returned to camp to prepare for his studies at the military academy. Unexpectedly, at that moment, the commander informed Coriolanus that plans had changed. It turned out that Volumnia from the Hunger Games, impressed by his talent, had pardoned all his charges. And we need the Hunger Games to remind us all who we truly are. Welcome home, Mr. Snow.